Literally the most ridiculous construction outfit I've ever seen. Blue Tongue Skink wants a gecko brother, so he is building me a bioactive enclosure. So we are gonna show you guys how to do that. All right guys, first things first, let's make sure that we're all good and clean. It is clean enough. This is an 18 inch by 18 inch by 18 inch older model of Exoterra. And unfortunately this model is older and it does not have this really nice little draining system that uh, the newer model has. We will just use some other things to sump out the water. So we have all our materials here. We have some water. We have a bunch of dying bioactive plants. We have some real natural cork bark. We have a nice little mesh. We have some clay marbles for our drainage layer. A bunch of bioactive soil that has springtails and isopods in it. And of course we have leaves for our leaf litter on the ground floor. First things first, we are going to add the gravel in. Now you can get these clay marble balls pretty cheap. Might be able to find some at Lowe's, might be able to find some at Home Depot. I know a lot of local pet stores might have them as well. Step one, oh yeah, we're getting down and dirty. Oh, that, yes, yes sir, yes sir. Look at that, look at that baby. Nice little drainage layer foundation there. We'll be able to use these to sump out any water we need to sump out. And part of the drainage layer, in addition, we're gonna have this naturalistic drainage layer. It gets any water flowing through our substrate. This is kind of an airier version of the clay marbles, but we're gonna add it anyways, just to do some experimentation. All right, here we go, here we go. And this is gonna be interesting. We're combining two different elements for our drainage layer here, because this is going to house a gecko. Might be a gargoyle gecko, might be a new Caledonian. Leechianus redactylus, lychee gecko. It also could even be a chihuahua gecko. And then we are going to add a bit more clay marbles here. Just a bit more, we don't have to add a ton. We want about two to three inches. Two to three inches here. Let's spread that out, see how it looks. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Now we wanna compare our work to the actual bioactive I have over here. I think a little bit more clay marbles are warranted. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. Then we level her out. All right guys, that's looking pretty good. Let's let the dust clear, goodness. Step number two, add the mesh layer. This is my favorite part because it's like putting a big old pizza dough on top of some marbles. Oh yeah. Look, oh, it fit perfectly. Oh, oh, it fits so well in there. Sheesh. I can't even, man. This boy's geometric skills are on point. Step two is over. We can commence with what I like to call step trace. Step trace involves adding a little bit of this booster. Now what we have here from Frog Daddy, pretty rad stuff. Substrate makes it sound for us, pause, other inverse contains peat moss. Sphagnum moss, willow oak leaves, horticultural charcoal, hummus, decayed wood, leaf powder with food additives, calcium line, hardwood fiber, organic mat. Molding may occur due to food additives, not dangerous. Fixture is great for holding moisture, contains stable food sources for detrivorous and omnivorous organisms. This is the live vivarium version that actually has springtails and isopods, powder and dwarfs, and uh, yeah, basically everything else. So fully ready to go soil. Oh, sweet peaches. Sweet peaches, this is satisfying. Oh, 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 plastic, oh. I'm gonna get dirt in my nose. So that is our living organism soil. Now we're going to add the booster soil here. On a boost, here we go, here we go. Yes, yes. All right, oh, I love playing in dirt. Yes, I do. Okay, is that our last? bag of fauna boost just adding some more oh god i love pouring dirt into enclosures isn't it just so satisfying to build your own enclosures guys and gals it's freaking wonderful all right now let's just level her out a little bit Ooh. Right, my hands are getting some good touching going on in this dirt fantastic step three is complete we want to put a little bit of a hill in the back a little bit of terramorphosis going on here. We're actually going to need a bit more substrate. Let's top her off a bit. A little bit of cocoa fiber. Cocoa fiber, interestingly enough, will break down odor and waste products. It's all gonna get super damp anyways. 
is we're gonna have a misting system as well because eventually we wanna put some awesome tree bark in here. Okay, looking good so far. All right, guys, next step, putting our plant species in. So the first plant species we have is called the Cholaria amabilis. This can get up to 24 inches tall. This plant species is native to Honduras and Colombia. Now she's not looking so great, but we are gonna nurse her back to health. Oh man, we should become a gardening channel, guys. I mean, it's so much fun. It's gonna come back to life for sure. So the next plant species on the list is called the Pelea mollis. Beautiful green. And she's native to Costa Rica and Colombia as well. Isn't that beautiful? The largest plant species we're going to introduce is called the bromeliad. There she is, just look at that beautiful flowering plant right there. Mm -hmm. So now bromeliads can be found at pretty high altitudes. Indian highlands, Chile to Colombia. They can be found in Peru, Sechura Desert, the cloud forests of Central and South America. So some species that are native to Africa. Potting. I'm gonna put a long piece of driftwood right through the middle here. All right, that's looking good. Nobody's blocking anybody's sunlight. Okay, okay, looking nice, looking spiffy. All right, the next South American plant that we have on the menu is the Nautilocalyx equidoranus. She's not looking so hot, but we are going to freshen her up. And this beautiful plant species, as its name implies, is from Ecuador. So we're really building out a South American rainforest habitat for our gecko. All right, let's go ahead and get this little girly out. Put her in the front left corner. Let her kind of flourish over here. She will be getting a lot of water here in a bit. The next plant species is called the Costus tapenbachianus, or colloquially called the spiral ginger. This beautiful plant species is native to the islands of Dominica, the Dominican Republic. Guadalupe, Martinique, and Puerto Rico. Roots over here. I think we'll put her right here. We have guys five entire plant species for our bioactive enclosure for a future gargoyle gecko, lychee gecko, or New Caledonian mossy gecko, AKA the Chihua gecko. So the next step, is to figure out our cork bark game. All right, let's just get into it. Let's break this bad boy up. Ooh, whole cans. That's fine. Just vacuum that up later. Hey! I'm gonna add one in the back, in this corner. And maybe we just put one cork bark in there, guys. What do you think? All right, guys. Looking pretty. Got all these plants on the cheap. They were dying, so I am going to make it my mission to revitalize them and make this a living rainforest. Another interesting little piece of information for you guys is that I fabricated my own acrylic top and drilled a bunch of holes in it. Basically, I don't think that I'm going to keep this on here. I think I'm just gonna get a large glass pane with a little hole for the misting system because, you know, th these are all live plants. We're going to need actual lighting, which I have on this one, which I'm about to compose and put on this one. But yeah, basically we're gonna keep the frame of the Exoterra top and we are going to add glass to be very professional and poggers as such. Yeah, we didn't make a mess or anything. No vacuuming needed. All better! We get down to the meat and potatoes of the situation. We gotta move this big old rack to this big old corner and these big old enclosures to this back wall. That's good dose. And just like the pros do it, Yeah! All right, now we begin the Herculean task of taking these very heavy bioactives and placing them up shaw. All right, guys, check it out, check it out. We got everything set up here. We got a light going in here. We've got it watered down pretty good. I'm gonna be applying water every 20 minutes. They're already starting to shape up a little bit. Look at this. Ayo! Nicely done, guys. Got both lights up and at them. Looking good, looking nice, looking spiffy. These lights are connected to a timer, which I have placed right back here. So they're on a 12 hour cycle, and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. It's worked well for the dart frogs for the last eight months. 
Ain't that just glorious? Oh, oh my. Tarantula Town Home looking pretty good. Need to throw that pumpkin away. So check it out guys. Here is the final product looking a lot better than from where we started. This is also about 36 hours after our initial try. As you can see, the plants are doing much better than they were. High hopes for this thing. I try to put an angel plant in there, pink angel plant. I think it was a little too far gone, so I opted with a larger bromeliad. I also decided to put the cork bark on the left side. Anyways, guys, yeah, this is Rev Zero of many for our future gecko companion. So we'll be adding some perches, some additional hides, things like that. But I think this is a really good starting point. Been dousing the enclosure with a ton of water. Looks like our drainage layer is working very effectively. Very pleased, very, very pleased indeed. So looks super baller in this room. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hit 5,000 subscribers, so huge thank you for all that support. Love you guys. A lot of requests to do an entire tour of all the animals here in the Tarantula Townhome, so I will be working on that next. Stay tuned, my friends. But thank you, God bless you, and I will see you in the next video. Also, like we found Sergeant Potato's favorite Pokemon. Oh!